Hello, hold on. Hold on. Oof. Oh, do we do this cupcake? You'll be here in a sec. Oh, okay. Ah, I was making sure my her headphones were plugged in. Looks well, really cold. Mm, cold popsicle is cold. Ah, uh, yes. They tend to be, huh? Yeah. So, how are you? I am school. Well, I me mean, on break at the beginning of my break, so that's always good. Yay, break time! Yay! And it's thankfully not as crazy busy as last week. When folks were calling us because we were the only people apparently answering our phones. And we're sitting there going, uh, well, the tickets department is a lot more slammed than we are because, well, they're the tickets department. And then we have less people in the office than we do. Taking phone calls. Oh so, my. Huh? Yeah. Honk. Honk, honk. Uh, Kiki, uh, Kiki was, uh, Kiki was mentioning earlier that cold popsicle is cold. Cold popsicle? <laughs> cold popsicle was cold. Oh, cold popsicle. They said coke popsicle is coke. I'm like, well, okay, then. Uh, yes. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Super Happy Fun Jabatron Tea Party Podcast with Kiki, Cupcake, and Miss. Did you know that the first person convicted of speeding was going 8 miles per hour? You humans are crazy. Enjoy the show. Speaking of coke, I haven't taken my pills. Oop. Why don't you go take your pills? Well, they're right in front of me, so I don't have to move. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. So I found this at the grocery store. I don't know if it'll come through. You know, Mountain Dew Zero watermelon? Yeah, Major Melon. Major Melon. Oh. I've never even heard of this. I'm going to give it a shot. Ooh. Oh, that was a lovely face. Oh, oh, that was a bad bite. It's watermelon in the sense of watermelon candy flavor. Oh. Okay. That's not bad, but I wouldn't get it again. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, I bought a whole case of it because that's how it came. I was like, oh, that sounds like a fun flavor. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <sighs> I would say a mixer, but... Yeah, I don't drink anymore, so that's not really a problem. Damn my recovery from alcoholism. <laughs> okay. Uh, dude, uh, one of my buddies I haven't talked to in forever was like, 
we were talking about shit like all the stuff we you know, he hasn't talked to me in a while and I was like he's like like what do you mean you quit drinking? I'm like I quit drinking. He's like like done done? I'm like yeah like cold turkey. He's like holy shit what the hell is wrong with you? How supportive. Well he's an alcoholic so to him it just seems bizarre. You know, to me, it made complete sense at the time. Still does, but it made sense at the time. Oh. Uh, uh, take some. No, it's not not prescription. Just. The oh, fuck? It's in here somewhere. I just hit the. There's the no, I just want one. You tell the kid. Yep. So how's Cupcake? Uh, you know, surviving. Living the life, as it were. <laughs> Not exactly the dream, but the life. Yeah. No, as I was telling the, my buddy, he's like, he's like, so how, how, he's like, he, he was really insistent on knowing how much money I made. I'm like, I make enough. He's like, how much is enough? I'm like, enough to live comfortably. He's like, well, how much money is that? I'm like, enough. He's like, God damn it. Why won't you tell me? I'm like, cause it's not important. He's like, oh, so you don't make anything. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's like, what? Like 40 grand? I'm like. Yeah, I made that when I was a full timer. He's like, "So how much do you make?" I'm like, "Enough." Now you're a goddamn business. He's like, "Well, it's important for us to share this information so we know if we're being paid well enough." I'm like, "You're not being paid enough money. Ask for more." He's like, "But," I'm like, "Dude, it's not important. Like, don't worry about it." He's like, "You don't discuss your pay. Like, that's weird." I'm like, "No, it's not." Like. I discussed with my guys what we're all getting paid, but, like, you don't need to know. It's not important. Mm -hmm. What does it matter what I make? He's like, so you don't make anything. I'm like, sure. I, it doesn't, dude, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I mean, I don't make anything. Right. I said, money is not important, dude. Like, the only importance of money is having is having enough to live comfortably. Beyond that, it's... It's just a number. You know, whether I make 20000 or or 100000 it doesn't matter. It's not important. It's one of those things where it's like, you, you, you haven't talked to an old friend in a while, and if you realize they haven't... My, my feeling on this is that he may not have grown as much as a person as I have, which is kind of like this. He's still focusing on the same things that he was focusing on the last time we talked. Mm. Yeah, life does like a rich and famous kind of thing. Because mm. he was really, he was really focused on being in a relationship, having a ton of money, um, like being successful, I guess. Oh. I mean, just throw over something. I need to pull something else. Oh, okay. you make enough to support your anime addiction, right? Right. Which is important, right? Especially given that it seems that someone's going to bring up like one of the dudes, one of the head guys from Warner Brothers is saying, um, physical media is going the way of the dodo. They're not going to release movies on disc anymore. Like, starting in 2022. Wow. 
they're talking about, yeah, they're not going to do physical releases. They're just going to do streaming. Which I thought was crazy. I mean, at least I mean, maybe not in the rest of the world, but in the United States, they're gonna they're going to the he claims that they're going to start stepping away from physical media. Hmm. Like to me, it just seems crazy because like there's so many there's like so many things that wouldn't exist if there wasn't a physical record of them. Yeah. I mean, physical's kind of conjecturary, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I have copies of things that will probably never, ever reappear on, you know, streaming or anything just because they're so old that there's no real market. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a thing that came to mind. It's a bit of a shame, too, because right. people like to collect things, and if... I mean, being able to buy a digital copy is kind of dying out, too. I'm sorry, I was turning the fan off. What What's up? Being able to buy a like digital copy of something and own it. Oh, yeah, no, that's... How like... you can stream it. You just you're just not going to have physical like a physical copy or whatever you call it like a data copy of it because mm-hmm. that was the thing um, I've you know like I listen to audiobooks like when I'm sitting at lunch and stuff because I just I don't really like mass media anymore I feel like there's too much focus on everything that's wrong in the world and it kind of is draining to listen to. That's just personal opinion, not like, this is the way it is. No, I don't mean that. Like, it's... Mm-hmm. I, I can't listen to, like... like I can't sit in the car and eat a sandwich and, like, listen to the radio because all they do is talk about everything that's fucking wrong with the world, which I'm well aware of just by osmosis of, of being alive and seeing, you know, you know, checking my emails kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like... It. You can't... You can't get, like, audiobooks on disc. You can't even, like, a lot of these companies don't even do, you can't even buy, like, an MP3. It's, you, like, you can buy the rights to stream it from, like, Amazon's service, or you get nothing. It doesn't have to be Amazon, you know, pick your poison, Apple, whatever, but it's, like, it's not, you don't get an MP3, you don't get a CD, you get the right to stream it. So if you don't have internet access, you just, you get nothing. You bought the right to stream it, not to physically have a copy. Which is just like blowing my mind. What's up? That's why we need libraries. For those who don't have internet. Well, but the the whole thing, Mish, is like, if there is no physical copy, it doesn't matter whether there's a library or not. Like, it's you don't have access to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, the library doesn't have it. Then. Oh well, that really sucks. You know, like at least with a right, like a library, you can check it out. But if there's no physical copy, there's nothing to check out. Like, yeah, the library's a non-point. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> That's a big shame. Considering how many people still don't have like proper internet, internet. Internet? Internet? Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. Uh, seriously, it's it's blowing my mind because it's like, okay. Like, I I don't get it. I mean, I know we were going down this trend, but not right. so quickly. Like, all of a sudden, like, with COVID, it seems like with COVID hitting, they made this, like, hard decision that, like, they're just not going to do physical media anymore. And, like, I got, I kind of got, like, mass market movies, because it really is honestly a a game of, like, people don't, like, on average, people don't buy physical copies of, like, big budget movies anymore. They, you know, they stream it off Amazon or Netflix or whatever, and that's, like, I, I don't, 
I don't personally have any interest in owning a physical copy of something that's that readily available. But I still think there should be a physical copy somewhere that you could Agreed. gain access to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you... Go ahead. Well, like, for example, my little old lady grandma, who all she has is cable and a phone line. She's got no internet. Say she wants a movie or she wants to listen to an audiobook. She's so well, because, oops, you don't got a physical copy. Or even for folks like my brother, who is, you know, making sure that, hey, you know, my kids are not, they, they have internet, but during the week, it's like, we're going to no and internet. Limit their access. You know, yeah. the, limit the access. Like, on the weekends, fine, you can stay up late watching a movie, but if they're, like, exercising or taking a walk and they want to listen to an audiobook, yeah. You know. Well, I mean, they make the assumption that you're you're living close enough to a uh, center of population that there is cell phone internet, basically. True. But even that's like, I mean, like an audiobook, yeah, like that's not as big of a deal because basically, let's be dead honest, you and I all know what what the thing would do is like if you bought an audiobook and you want to listen to it, it would just fucking download like whatever section. Like say like an hour's worth of data because it's not that big in the scheme of things. It's like, uh-huh. I mean, what a disc? When they were when they were CDs, they were seven hundred and fifty megabytes. As MP3s, I think I want to say it's like a couple hundred megabytes for an MP3 of like a, a whole audiobook of like a lot of things. They're not mm-hmm. big in yeah. the scheme of data. Yeah. So just download it. It's just that you can't get access to the file without the the internet handshake. True. Like, I don't know exactly how it works, but I'm guessing what it does is it basically just, like, loads the data onto storage on your device, and then in order for you to actually listen to it, it, like, does a keyed handshake with the server. So as soon as you stop paying for the service, you don't have access to the encrypted data anymore. Yeah. I know a lot of the times, uh, especially with Amazon Kindle, like, you know, buy audio, audible na- um, narration. I'm like, no thanks. But if you don't have, I don't necessarily know if that's something that will work similarly. Like, well, that's, you need that's kind of what I was getting at is like, like a lot of the audiobooks now come, like, with Amazon go through Audible. So if you don't have an Audible account, they just don't work. You can't buy a standalone MP3. It's either you buy it through the service, and when you're not paying for the service, it stops working. Mm-hmm. Or that that's it. There's no physical copy. There's no MP3. It's either you have the service, and you can, and you can buy rights to listen to it, but as soon as you stop paying for the service, it's dead. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah, so you don't actually own it. You've just paid for the right to listen to it. Right. For as long as you're paying for the Audible service. That's yeah. what was blowing my mind, because I was like, because I was looking at buying another audiobook because I just finished the one I was listening to, and I was like, oh, look at them. like, oh, there's no physical copy. Oh, but I could buy it on, oh, but you have to have an Audible subscription on top of buying access to it. I'm like, so why is it 30 bucks to buy access when I'm paying 30 bucks a month for the Audible? Oh. Because of money. Money, 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 money. Unfortunately, because of money. Yeah, but it's like, then one of these should be cheaper than the other. It should not yeah, be 30 true. bucks for an audiobook and 30 bucks a month for Audible. True. Yeah, it is a bit bullshit how expensive non physical copies of things are compared to the physical copy. Like, I'm all for people getting paid, don't misunderstand me, but then, like, yeah. the Audible service should be, like, ten bucks a month if I'm paying full price for the copy. True. Let me, like, let me I, I have this. no issue with the with the audiobook being 30, 40 bucks. That wasn't the issue. It's that the Audible service is also 30 bucks a month. They're like, well, we give you a free title a month. I'm like, yeah, but you're paying $30 just to have rights to access the things you've already bought. It's not a matter of, like... Like, that's why I'm like, like, if I was paying for Audible so that I could buy it and have a copy, okay. Or vice versa. But it's like, you're gonna pay full price for this, like you would if you bought it on disc, 
and you're going to pay for the right to access it. It's like it'd be like it'd be like if you went on like Netflix. It's like your know, Netflix is twelve bucks a month, but every movie you want to watch is ten dollars. It's like why am I paying for the service then? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Maybe if I was paying for a premium to get it early or something, but even then it would have to be right. not as expensive. Right. Uh, I'm pulling up my Kindle. And I want to see something. <clears throat> Kindle Let me unlimited. see if I can see. Yeah, there's Kindle Ooh, Unlimited. Oh, it's only uh, So, I'm trying to see if it allows me to see something. I know mean, there's usually... Like, maybe I misunderstood. I'm trying to see if it tells me... Uh, no annotation, no. So I know there's usually something that says like add, uh, you know, audible narration for X amount of dollars. So it's a similar thing where you buy the book for nine ninety nine, and then for an additional amount of money, you can purchase audible narration. And I'm like, that kind of sucks, especially right. for the physically blind and hard of sight. Woo-hoo. I wasn't pulling up easily, so I wasn't going to sit here and try to look for it. Right. Thankfully, I don't need it. It doesn't help that there's just so many different services out there. Right. That you have to eventually just. I mean, depending on what you want to watch, end up buying a... more than you asked for. Right. I mean, you could always get cable, but cable is also expensive. Right. Which is why we don't have cable. Well, cable's just kind of. Uh. Weird in the sense that, like, ten years ago it seemed weird not to have it. Now it seems weird to have it. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, a bunch of people must still because it's still. A thing. Oh yeah, no. Like my mom was super hesitant about getting rid of it, but then eventually, like, we dropped our our bill from like two hundred fifty bucks a month down to like ninety because we're paying for like slightly better than average internet. Even that's kind of like we. Given how little she uses the internet, I could probably be paying like sixty bucks a month and still have good service. Because even a bandwidth I'm buying, I'm paying for two hundred fifty meg internet, and like other than like this and a couple other things, like I don't really need that much bandwidth. She's barely on the internet. I mean, she's like iPad or her phone. Like it's not, you know, and she streams on her TV, which is like whatever. I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I even told the cable company, I'm like, I would gladly pay the extra 50 bucks a month if unlimited bandwidth, like, for the caps, because, like, we just, we just won't stream so much. Mm-hmm. I'm just in a weird position because I'm, uh, like, a collector of something that, like, had I been born 10 years later... I probably would have never become an anime collector because I would have been born late enough that streaming would have been mainstream by the time I got into it. Yeah. And I probably would have just been like, why the fuck would you ever collect? But I was like born late enough that it became a thing right about the time I got into the hobby. And so I just, it was like a, uh, what am I trying to say? Critical mass. I got. I started collecting, and then I got far enough in that it seemed silly to stop and just stream and stop buying. And now, with the way the world's going, I'm like this. This is gonna sound absolutely terrible, but I've almost become an like an archivalist. 
because nobody is doing this. I have now have things that will not exist in the streaming like universe or sphere of streaming. There are things that they're just not going to bother with. I don't think you can stream Trigun anywhere. Not that they're like kids half my age watching it at this point, but then I'm saying it's like it's a part of history that is just going to be left like it's the second episode of Cowboy Bebop with like the Betamax tape yeah. where they're like they're like some dude in a junk shop's like I am a Betamax player because like otherwise there's no way to see the media because it's all on fucking quote unquote dead formats. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that uh, when I was watching, what was it? Um, Modern Marvels. They were right. reviewing like the um, museum for film right and so they were showing like we have to have all forms of players for all forms of media and we have to like go through like antique shops yard sales and right. we might find some information or some hardware to play this we have to make sure we have it and then they have like they keep it in storage so that like hey here's some parts here's some parts for this one and Everything right, because like it's entirely possible that there will come a time when, like, literally, you know, pardon the phrase, educational institutions or historical institutions are the only way that certain things are going to get transferred into a more modern format. Yeah, and they they said this part of their they're doing they're going on they're moving it to that more modern format, but in order to do that. We kind of need something to play it on. I mean, I've I've increasingly making the argument, and this is something I've said about myself, which is why I'm you know obviously got a stake in this. Is like academics and archivalists, or however you want to look at it, are the only thing keeping bits and pieces of our history alive, because otherwise the shit is just lost to the fog of, of time mist of time sorry it's like you know i mean i i mostly focus yeah. on like animation but I mean, it's it's this game of if nobody ever converts it from a dead format to something that can be played on a on a modern device we just it's just gone it's it's fucking gone yeah i don't have like a good example because they, there are companies now that are starting to take older unknown properties i'm mostly focusing on animation but like when the guy, one of the guys from Warner Brothers was saying, you know, they, this, this whole thing about no physical media started because they aren't seeing enough sales on, um, like, like Looney Tune collections was where, like, it, like the seed of this all started. They were like, old stuff is not selling on disc because the only people who buy it are just this little tiny niche of people. And I was like, it's terrifying because there's a whole like everybody laughs like it's a cartoon but like Looney Tunes is a reflection of the American people at the time it was produced like whether yeah. it be World War II propaganda or just like post World War II like baby boomer era like Looney Tunes you're seeing all this stuff that's it's a reflection of society and our views and with it you know, with them saying, like, we're just not going to bother, you know, bringing it forward with us because nobody watches it. It's like, but somebody needs to keep a copy of this shit because otherwise it's going to disappear. It's kind of what happened with old films. It's like films of the 1920s and 30s. Like, 90% of the films just gone because, like, who, you know, who wants to watch a film from 30 years ago kind of thing? And then, you know, it got farther and farther out. Now it's like, Hey, there was this film they made, you know, like in 1935. I don't have like an example, but they would talk about like there's this film and this, people remember it, but there's no physical copies left. And it's like, holy shit, holy shit. Like we made something and nobody kept the copy and it just disappeared. It we have historical records that existed, Thank but there's God. no copy. It's yeah. gone. That's um sadly why a lot of classic Doctor Who episodes are missing. Mm-hmm. Because they recorded over the tapes. And, like who would ever want to watch this again? Mm-hmm. So it's really a fan 
thing to like if you suddenly find you have a copy of it to turn it in it's such um, a big deal uh they started to recreate some of them because they still have the scripts and stuff right into like animations right they're basically remaking them as something else just so that they have a working copy mm -hmm. so there's something so you at least know this at some point in time happened we we fucked up but here's the plot right. um the uh physical copy of the moon landing only just because somebody videotaped a monitor yeah um my favorite one like you know in my own little sphere of influence uh medix 01 which is a classical or not classical but a classic ova from the 80s is is there's a campaign going right now which has already been achieved because i just it came out Friday, and before the guy could go one day of the can the Kickstarter being active, he'd already gotten the goal to get it um, to get it fulfilled. He needed he needed fifty he needed fifty grand to do a restoration of it. He got that in like six hours. Nice. But the point of being is, uh, uh, Robert I think it's Robert Woodward. Uh, he owns uh, Animigo, which is this really old uh, anime licensor from, like, the 80s and 90s. And basically what he, if you could guess, he kind of, like, his spiel has been bringing older titles and, like, remastering them and bringing them out on Blu-ray for, like, modern consumers. And the, like, impetus of this whole, like, kickstartering and, re like, to, to remaster stuff, Bubblegum Crisis which I, I miss the Blu-rays of, and I'm still mad about it to this day. And I've occasionally seen the Blu-ray copies show up on eBay, but they're like $900. Ooh. So I've just been like, uh, I'll, I'll keep my eyes open, and eventually somebody will sell me a copy for a reasonable price. Yeah. Um, but I've hit every other one. Um, Gunsmith Cats. Oh, there's been a couple. Gunsmith Cats. Um, obviously, I just did Maddox 01, which... Um, that'll probably be December that'll be here. He, that's what he's aiming for. He's already done, like, I think he said, like, for every every time they double the original amount, he was like, you know, they'll do something else, they'll add a, a bonus. He's already at, like, three or four times his original amount he needed, so he's doing good. That's good. Um, but they did that for, like, um, uh, right stuff anime out of Iowa, like, where I buy all my anime from, they did that for, um, Area? Which is the one about the ter terraformed um, Mars gondoliers on Mars? Um, Emma, which is the Victorian romance anime. Um, I feel like there's another one that I've that I got. Maybe it was just those three. Maybe it was just Emma, Ben Smith, Cats, and Area. Another's Maddox. I feel like there was another one. Oh, um. Irresponsible Captain Taylor got a remaster, which was really interesting. That was a that was an interesting one in the sense that they didn't do a Kickstarter. They just said like, if we get enough orders for the copies to pay for having it done, we'll do it. If we don't, it doesn't happen. And they did. And so I'm out like 400 bucks in June, but I don't care at this point. Yeah. Um. That also happened with like Dragon Ball Z. Like the steel books that are that they're advertising now are based off of the Dragon Box they did like last spring or the spring before I can't remember. Um, and had I known they were going to do the Dragon, they're going to do the steel books. I might have waited and done the steel books instead of the Dragon Box because that was like six hundred bucks and the steel books are like four hundred altogether. But it's the same, it's the same thing. So I'm not going to buy the steel books because they're what's in the big Dragon Box. Um, but it's just, I mean, just getting back to, like, this stuff is becoming more and more niche. Like, it was a niche when I started collecting, but it's, like, super niche now. And, like, I feel, I feel like this, like, old wizard in, like, a library with the shit that I've, I've managed to collect. Because there's stuff that I own that there are, like, you know, younger fans that, like, don't even know what the hell I'm talking about when I say, like, oh, yeah, I've got blah, blah, blah. They're, like... That's a thing? Like, what the hell is that about? I'm like, right, because you're watching them, you know, like, live as they stream on Crunchyroll and Funimation and Sentai and blah, 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 blah. And then I'm pissed off about shit like, 
you know, like we were talking yesterday, uh, laid back camp, just completely, you know, abandoned by everybody. It's a Crunchyroll license, no, no physical license ever actually acquired. So it never got dubbed, it never got released, it's just, it'll always just be streaming until somebody, and what I'm guessing will happen, will happen with a lot of these things, it's like, 10 years from now when nobody gives a shit, like, Disco Tech Media, which is the company that does, like, all the licensing of old abandoned properties, stuff from, like, the 70s, 80s, things that, you know, there's no market value for for the big companies, will pick up. They're the ones that are doing Lupin the Third. Um, like old 80s giant robot animes um, like City Hunter which is something I don't think anyone under the age of like 30 would have even, even heard of um, I don't remember what was on their June their June docket but they showed like what was coming out next month and I was just like that's a lot of really old anime that no one's ever heard of yeah At least someone's doing it. I know, I dude, I love that they exist because there's so many titles that like I I I can't like I can't name them off the pile the things I've old things I've bought, but like there's titles I've bought well they're they're the reason why we got Blu-ray releases of um the Car Captor Soccer movie. Because like there's no there's no like demand in a sense, like for a physical copy, but they it's a big enough franchise that with with the Blu-rays coming... Well, I mean, I, A, it never would have even gotten licensed for an HD transfer if not for the fact that ClearCard came out. Like, if they had never done ClearCard, it just, like, we wouldn't have gotten the movies in HD. They would have been... They would have stayed SD. But because of that, and because... Anim, or, uh, I think it was, was it NIS America did the Blu-ray transfers of the original series... Like, way before, because that was, like, what, like, three, four years before they announced ClearCard, but because of that, like, they, like, the whole thing is available on HD. Ooh. Fun. And I've, and as I've shown you guys last night, like, the G-Gun, the, the HD transfers are amazing com- compared to, like, original, like, the first generation of DVD transfers. It's ugly! Like, you saw that, like, G Gundam is from like the late nineties as a transfer, and it's ugly. It is so bad. Oh yeah, like Kiki, I remember I agree with Kiki. She was like, "Why does this look like VHS?" I'm like, "Yeah, it does look like VHS." <laughs> like <laughs> stuff from when, when we were like kids watching the first release of Lion King. Like, well, uh, the thing is, like, bad, that's if that's all you have, then fine. But what the the thing is you have to remember easy? is displays when that came out were only a quarter of the resolution of displays in the mid 2000s now they're only the resolution that that was encoded in is only a 16th of the resolution of a modern 4K monitor oh. so it's like it's like when you were a kid and you would blow up like like the little like real media videos or like the jpegs and they were shot with like a low, like it was as high as resolution as you could get, but it was like you know a two megapixel camera on a like a 1080 monitor, and you're like, why the hell is the resolution so bad? Because they fucking the, the receivers, the CMOS chips were so like janky compared to it. It's this whole thing. It's like they encoded this in 480 by 720, and my monitor is. 3,800 by 2,100. Yeah. Like, even for me, like, because we we got, I know I may have mentioned that we got a new computer. Mm-hmm. And we got a new HD monitor. Right. So we still have the old monitor. For right. We first com- for our first house computer as a couple. Right. Right. And the difference, it's like. I don't necessarily need to lean forward or need my glasses for the one on the right because it's fifty new on HD and it's larger. All right, <laughs> it's easier this to see. Just, like, keep in mind that I'm being lit. Like, the fact that there's light on my face is because there are three monitors. Like, they they just with an image on them produce so much light 
that I don't have to have lights on to see me. And the old yes. monitors were not nearly this bright. These things are fucking stupid high bright for what they are. And these aren't even the newest. Like, I, w- I was looking for a wireless charger for my phone, and I was looking at the new versions of these monitors, and I was just like, they're even brighter than these are. I'm like, holy shit, the future is so bright. <laughs> now, the biggest difference really is just that the new ones have HDR, whereas the old versions of the ones I currently have don't. So it's not world-ending, because I don't really... I don't have any capability to use HDR on these, so it's not world-ending that they added that feature after... I'm mad because I bought two monitors last year, and now they came out with ones that have HDR, and if I had known they were going to do that, I would have held off. But yeah, I don't know. It's to me, it's an interesting concept to see like officials from companies go, "Yeah, we just don't see a future in physical media." And I'm going, "Oh my god!" Like nobody from the anime industry has said that yet, but the first time they do, I'll probably shit a brick. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do when they decide there's no market for physical anime releases anymore. Suddenly have a whole lot more money? Probably. I mean, you'll be very sad at the same time, but... Right. I think it's just going to become, like, more and more niche for the most part, because, like, I'm noticing that, like, a lot of they're doing a lot more, like, specialty releases and a lot less, like, there There was a glut there for a little while where they were, like, you remember this, like, when DVDs first got big, they released everything on DVD, and then they slowed down, and then Blu-rays came around, and they kind of, like, there was a whole lot of stuff being released, and now we're kind of back to, like, they're only releasing maybe five or six titles on physical media now, like a month. Like for a while there, it was like a couple dozen. And all of a sudden now we're back to like, it's just a couple. And it's a lot of like, they're bringing a lot of old stuff back and then like re-releasing it. Like I saw, I can't say it right, but like Rex of Felion is going to get a release in HD in June. Like, even Kiki doesn't remember. I barely remember it existing. I what missed the existed? physical release originally. For which one? Uh, it's, it's like Raxophelion or something. I'll pull it up off of Sensi's website. I'll link you guys. I mean, just, like, they didn't even make any notice of it. They just, like, announced it on their June slate that they're going to release it. Like, they're going to do a physical release. I think it was June. No, the first movie oh, it was July. That, the first movie I ever remember getting ever in my life was The Lion King, literally. Right. <laughs> I remember being so excited because I was like, oh, my brother's gonna be my younger brother's gonna be so excited. Yay, the I'll Lion King is <laughs> like Hong Kong. <laughs> uh, Hong Kong indeed. <laughs> hey, that's my line, god damn it. Oh. Oh. Okay. La, 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 la. Deep, 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 deep. Ooh. Oh, pretty. Ooh, Discotech is releasing the Blackrock um, shooter. I haven't gotten a chance to see that. I'm glad that they're releasing it then. Scroll up, scroll up. Yeah, I was I was shocked to see that that they were that they were gonna do a physical release of that. After all the years of threatening it, then finally actually going through with it. Ooh, it's gonna have a new English dub. Yeah. 
they like didn't they like I feel like they test like they test fired a dub and it didn't go over very well and so like they made a dub and it wasn't very good. Probably. So then because I feel like I remember seeing like the clips like they advertised they were going to do a release like when it first came out and then it didn't like the dub the like the clips were terrible. Like, oh, we'll, we'll go back and try again. Well, they never actually... I don't remember who it was, but they never went back and actually did it. Oof. It's like the first dub of uh, Grun Lagan. There was a ADV dub, and it was... Oh, it was so bad. They only dubbed, like, the first couple episodes, but it was so bad. Then I think... Genyon did a dub? I forget who, or Bandai. One of them, like did an actual dub, and it was so much better. That's good. Uh, going back to it, I guess, uh, I did watch the second season of Laid Back Camp. And oh, yeah? Again, very chill, very cute, very adorable. Just a bunch of girls with different personalities, being friends, going camping. Right. Teaches you how to camp a little bit. Teaches you a little bit about Japan. Especially Fuji-sama. Mm. Or Fuji-san, depending on who's saying it. Call it Mr. Right. Fuji. Instead of Mr. Right. Fuji. And so many hot springs. All the hot springs. Not a lot of booby groping or anything like that, but so many hot springs. Right. Because, you know, Japan and volcanoes and whatnot. Right. Oop, there's a dog. Yes, he has a hard life there on his couch. So I started um, reading The Handmaid's Tale, mm. which is interesting because I've seen both the movie and the TV show up to the latest episode that released, that releases today, I think. Um, so there are some differences, of course, like they're adding a little bit more um, in terms of the TV show, The Ages changed for the waterfords from the book and the tv show the movie kind of had them closer to the age that they are like maybe in their 60s mm -hmm. something like that. um and but in the tv show they made them younger like maybe in their 30s you know early mid 30s um but they did keep like the flashback type thing like she's now a handmaid and we're gonna flashback to her training as a handmaid and then her current life flashing back to her life with Luke and her daughter and you know um stuff like that so it's still very it's a still very interesting read and kind of pointing out like it's hard for her to remember her life before being a handmaid and kind of showing how by dint of like rep repetition and by dint of trying to survive, you f maybe forget some things and how things were. Like, oh, what was that ice cream shop's name? Jackie's? Johnny's? Oh, yeah, it was Jimmy's. And forgetting, like, did I really go out in a swimsuit to the beach and parade my body in front of everybody? When it was like, you no, know, that was the social norm, like. But she's so used to being modest and covering up from, like, literally chin- all the way down the ankle, all the way down the um, you know, wrists, and wearing gloves and everything like that. So, you know, having that is a little bit different there. So, um, one moment, I'll be coding a call. Okay. Um. Just in case I get a phone call right away. Uh, I keep meaning to go back and read that because I want to read the sequel that finally came out. Yeah. Um, 
and it's been so long since I read The Handmaid's Tale. I keep meaning to watch the show, too. I keep meaning to do a lot of things. Tell me about it. As he stares at the pile growing into the ceiling. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, I think I binged the first three seasons of Handmaid's Tale on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, so it really kind of paints a realistic post-apocalyptic nightmare, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, I because there's enough people who believe what those in Gilead believe. That it's like, okay. Oh shit. Like, like they, they could realistically pull this off, and it's terrifying. <laughs> um, at least for me, it's, um, for, I'm assuming for me and for most people who are relatively reasonable, because I know we're all unreasonable sometimes that it's just like terrifying that that could happen that easily and yeah and just you know seeing there looking like i was like the last episode i was watching um i was seeing there going like janine deserves better janine deserves better like not that they all don't deserve better but i'm like mm. I was like, poor Janine, like, you know, she maybe wasn't necessarily the, the sternest minded, and due to her um, abuses at the hands of Gilead, including the physical where she loses an eye, like, she's very just flighty, and she deserves so much better. And for the, like, at the end of the episode, some of the other handmaids are running away with them. I'm like, just in case anyone watches this, uh, I won't give it away, but I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of ha I'm sad that it happened to them, but I'm happy that it happened at the same time. Okay. Because it's better than what they were living. Well, yes, yeah, so that's, that's, um... What are the words I'm looking for? Fate worse than death? Yeah. Yeah. Being a handmaid is a horrific and terrible life. And as, um... What's the author's name? Again? Margaret Atwood puts it, this is more speculative fiction than science fiction. Fiction, yeah. She's, right. the, she's making not wholly satirical views on a lot of things, but uh, trends from the 80s that were happening at the time that you know, severely worried her, so she wrote a book. About a horribly patriarchal society. Oh no, look, we still live in one of those. Right. Just not as bad. I'm not dressed head to toe and being, you know, used as a thing. Oof. At least not here in America. Um... I should really bump that up on my reading list. Right. Because I remember it being such a good book. Because it, it's wholly from Alfred's point of view. I don't remember if we ever learned her real name or... Do we? Real name for who? Offred. Offred. Hmm. However you oh, say Alfred. it. 
Um, she is June. June? Okay. Yes. Because that's essentially her slave name. Because yeah. she's of Fred. She belongs to Fred. Yeah. And um, then most recently in the uh, season three, she's of Joseph. Mm. And because um, she gets another posting. They make it so, so genteel. She's at a posting. Pinky hair. Uh. But, um, yeah, there's, and, um, just as one may think, um, spoilers, uh, there's lots of upfront death in many forms. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, dystopic, militaristic, patriarchal society. Yes. Very monotheistic, faith-based. And yet the men can do whatever they want. They can go visit Jezebels. Well, yeah, they're men. Because they're special. Mm -hmm. I don't see any problem with this. Seems like a great world. I think I'll go live there. <laughs> I mean, she's only special in a sense. She gets to be a handmaid mm. because she's fertile. As opposed to a servant. Hmm. Apparently Loki is going to debut a couple of days early. Well, that's fun. I'm looking forward to that. So it'll be the 9th of June 9th of instead June of instead. 11th. Oh, yes. The 9th, yes. Loki, yes. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if someone else is looking forward to that. I wonder who it might be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Um, also, I'm in a Tom Hilston based server, so um, yeah. Guess what they've been talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So yeah. I mean, they have other channels for like other characters in the Marvel Universe and other fandoms, but yeah. Oof. And uh, uh, stupid blah, blah. What the freaky frack are you doing, system? I didn't touch it. I know. Okay. As long as you know that. Is this thing doing? I swear to baby Jesus. We need to go in and back out. Go out and back in. Something like that. But, um, yeah, so that'll be interesting. I mean, when I first saw the trailer, I was like screeching because I was like, baby, hip, DB Cooper. <laughs> oh, I was laughing so hard at that. <clears throat> Oh, there we go. I didn't think... So my, my work screen is, like, making me go question mark. Hmm. Because you're supposed to get a hat each year with your benefits package, and, well, they got two different years' hats in this year's benefits. I'm like, what? Uh, whatever. Oh, I have to reset the hat anyways. Um, I haven't really gotten up the interest to watch um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier yet. Oh, I loved it. I don't mind spoilers because I've already seen a lot of stuff. But um, it's and not that I won't love it. It's just it's kind of like WandaVision where like I watched part of the first episode and then I was my interest just went boom. Right off a cliff, and I'm like, I'll just watch it later. And then when I finally did watch it later, I was binging it. <laughs> so I'm like, probably the same thing's going to happen here. Mm. Um, so. But it was just like, a, 
I'll watch it when I watch it. I have Disney Plus. I'll watch it when I get to it. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not like it's going away or anything. Yeah. Oh, hell no. That's another problem with streaming, though, when things just kind of vanish from the site because right. the contract is yeah. up and they decided not to renew it. Well, now where do I watch it? Exactly. That's where the whole, like, physical media thing comes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, I can't, like, uh, or if this is going away from Netflix on May 31st, I'm like, what if I want to watch it after May 31st? Well, then you have to find it on the news service. Yeah. Wherever, wherever that... they went to. You better right. own yep. all the streaming services or you're fucked. If only we had something that bundled all the services together for a low price. <laughs> but they I, need... I, don't, I don't know but... about low price. Well, lower price than buying them separately. Yeah. Um... The biggest problem they have with that is a lot of people just hop from service to service as they watch things. Mm hmm. Although there are a couple of service bundles out there, they're just not all the services. Right. Well, and the cable companies are starting to do this whole deal like, for an extra 20 bucks, we'll, we'll bundle in, you know, Netflix and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, shit, okay. Mm hmm. I think next list is the only one I don't have access to. Right? No, I'm not. I don't have the, um, whatever the Showtime one is called. Whatever. Um... What else have I been watching? YouTube, really. Just, I got a week off from school and I was like, mm, let's let's be brain dead. Because <laughs> now I have to learn HTML5 and CSS3 and my brain's like, that looks like fun. Totally gonna use that later okay. in life. I I missed it because I was gonna call uh, what what looks like thin. HTML five and CSS three. That's the okay. <laughs> I was like the <laughs> programming stuff. Yeah. Okay. I was like, make sure I'm understanding what she's talking about. Yeah, I'm learning how to make websites. Ooh. And then the other class I'm taking is more based on print media. Cool. I get to learn InDesign, which I've used once in my life oh. ever. InDesign is fun, but I haven't used it since literally college. I Yeah, I haven't used it since community <laughs> college, so... Eh. It, classes are classes. I'll get through it. Yeah. But going back to Winter Soldier and the Falcon or Falcon and Winter Soldier, whichever one it is, is the second one. I think right. maybe. Yeah. It's it's a it's, it's not the best, but it's a great telling of what it means to be a uh, hero of color in America, and what it means to be a terrorist. What <laughs> actually is a terrorist? John Walker, cough, cough, John Walker, cough, cough. A far right white guy with a whole bunch of guns living in the fucking woods? Yes. Exactly. What? That's most terrorism in this country. Yeah. We're, we're agreeing with you, Cupcake. I know, that was the joke. Yay! Every time people bring up terrorists and like some like stereotypical like brown guy in a turban, I'm like, no, no, they're usually white guys are disenfranchised. Neo Nazis, bunch of guns in the woods playing make believe, and they get even more lost in fantasy and decide that they're going to blow up a federal building. Hey, you know, the rest is history. 
Oh, we're not taught that though. You know, because oh my god, we're not taught most things. Let's be dead honest. Our educational yeah. system is a goddamn joke. It's getting worse by the year. Exactly. Because our government wants stupid motherfuckers who believe you believe what they tell, what they're told. Oh, it's not even the government at this point. It's fucking political parties. Yeah. And media outlets. If media. you're listening, don't shoot me. Yeah, Thank apparently there was, like, a pipe bomb found, I want to say somewhere in Sacramento, but it might have been Tracy. Recently? That was Giggity. a shit storm. Giggity sounds like a party. Sign me up. Oh, somebody fished it out of the Sacramento River. Okay. That's it was okay. Alive, yeah. So somebody obviously meant to blow up the fish, I guess, and I, it didn't go off. I mean, that's one way to fish. Please I mean, it's not, it, dude. I mean, if, if it's just a, as if it's just a pipe full of fucking high explosives, they literally might have been trying to fish with dynamite. Yeah. It, I've seen that done around here. I mean, not literally seen, but you know what I'm saying? I've heard of that being done, people making improvised explosives to try to, like, shock the fish to the top of the lake. It's like, you know, you can just go get dynamite, right? Like, you don't have to make a pipe bomb. Oh, apparently it's Henry... Is it Cavill or Cavell? Oh, sure. Yeah, Superman? Yeah, it's his birthday. Well, good for him. Glad he survived another year of assassins. He is 38. He is not that much older than me. I thought he was older than that. I know, isn't that shocking? And you're like, oh, this person, oh, shit. It's also way cooler than me. Ah, uh, I feel like that's a stretch. <laughs> Okay. No worries. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, apparently my work is creating a new finally rolling out a new system to schedule people for when volume is there. So like, for example, my schedule, my quote unquote schedule, cause they, they kind of rolled it out, but it's not active yet. It's like, Oh, you're working 10 to seven, then 10, 15 to seven, 15, then eight to five, then 10 to seven, then eight to five. And like, okay. And so there are some people who were, when they were like, meeting with us like in groups of however many at a time last week there were people who were like we can't do a variable schedule like one lady was like i have two jobs and i run an animal rescue i cannot work outside of the hours i'm already scheduled she's like i may have to find another job but i've been a good employee <laughs> and so it's like eh. i'm like this what? is so yeah like because I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. So to do it by when the call volume is instead of just scheduling people for a schedule and leaving it there. Because it kind of the way it looks to at least me and maybe others is we have to check every single week to see what our schedule for the next week is. And they're like I told my mom last night, there's a part of me that goes, if I really wanted a variable schedule, I would go and apply to Aldi's where I can still sit down and cashier and get paid at least 
two two dollars more, one to two dollars more at a starting rate than I'm making right now after ten and a half years. Like, not telling them that because I don't want them to know that I may be looking, but. My friend who works there and I were like, this is not a good idea. People are going to throw it. Spit. And they were. And she was like, are there supervisors in that chat? I was like, yep. There's at least two supervisors that I see. And then the one like main operating person in like the main headquarters building who's like in charge of like roll helping roll this out. So there's at least three people there who can see these comments that people are making that, like, I can't work a variable schedule. I can't. Oh, my God. What do I do? And they're freaking out. So it's like, yeah, hopefully they 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 listen to what people are saying. And because otherwise people are going to be quitting left, right, and center, saying, peace. Here's my badge. Think. Yeah. So... What's really fun is when they pull shit like this, and it's like, I, I can't do this. They're like, well, too bad. So sad. But nice working with you. Mm -hmm. Like, I also, like, there was one point where, because they've been banging the overtime drum <laughs> like crazy. And, oh, yeah. And there is someone, one of the supervisors, like, they make threads every, every, um, every day for, like, the team's pages. And, um, you know, here's 10 things, the one supervisor, here's 10 things you can do that require no effort. One of those is do a little extra, maybe two hours extra. And so there's a part of me that wants to go, hi, guys. It, I didn't realize that overtime was mandatory. Oh, no, it's not. Well, this and this and this indicates it is. Who do I need to speak to in nature? <coughs> so, like... Right. You guys need to realize how you're coming off and why people aren't doing it because you're coming off as this is because every time I see something where you're banging the drum and how much overtime are you doing, it remains at zero for me. Zero overtime you're getting for me. Zero overtime. Zero overtime. Every time you do this, it's zero overtime. If you ask right. me nicely, maybe. Well, I feel like paid because as a manager, I'm on mandatory overtime during the busy season. They don't give us a choice. We just get scheduled it. But like I said earlier this week, they did up our pay $2 an hour flat, so I can't complain too much. Like, for what they're putting Mish through, they should be paying her so much more money. Yeah. Like, even my company's not that fucking stupid. They keep upping our pay because the conditions just keep getting worse and worse. Let's be dead honest. People are getting angrier because what they thought was going to be two weeks last winter turned into, what, a year and a quarter of madness? And even with vaccines, it's not looking like it's going to stop. All I know is I have, what, six days, five days until my second COVID shot, and then I only have to survive two more weeks, and then I'll be fully vaccinated, which isn't perfect, but at least I won't have to worry about dying from this shit. Yay, full vaccination. I'm fully vaccinated. Yay. Has it been two weeks already? Holy shit. I think so. Hasn't it? Probably. Yeah, you got, you got yours way earlier than I did, like... I was happy to get my first shot, to be dead honest, and as bad as that reaction was, I'm, I'm ready to fucking fight through the next one. Mm. Just to know that, you know, right, like, but I think it's the Tuesday before Memorial Day will be two weeks. So by Memorial Day, I'll be fully, everything will be good, and I plan, I plan that Wednesday after Memorial Day to go get some Chinese buffet, because I won't have to worry about I mean, I don't have to worry about catching it, but at least I don't have to worry about dying from it anymore. It's... Yeah. Mmm, Chinese buffet. 
because I think ours in town is open. I'm, I'm I haven't been there since like a year ago, January. So I'm not sure anymore. But I don't know if ours is open yet. I know it does take out, but that's not the same thing. No, that's the uh, I'm. I wanted to like see if they were doing, if they were doing. Uh, I mean, I don't even care about takeout if I could do, like, the Mongolian barbecue and just take a container away. Like, that's fine. I can handle that. No, I want to go in and be a fat ass. Well, I mean, you can be a fat ass without going in. It's not that <laughs> hard. I was actually thinking about getting Chinese tonight because my mom's going to go shopping for my grandma for Mother's Day. And my mom told me what she wanted for Mother's Day, so I ordered that. That'll be here Saturday. I just go out and get her a card, but I can do that tomorrow. We'll probably do our Mother's Day shopping Saturday, because Hubby has it all. I actually am going to be home for Mother's Day this year, so I don't know if we're doing anything for it, because I think all of my family, like, extended family is vaccinated now, so they can get together, and I've at least had my first shot in two weeks, so I'm not as concerned. Hmm. Netflix has a VTuber? Yeah, they just started it. Inco, an anime ambassador? Yep. Does Netflix do a lot of anime? Uh, kind of. That, that's, a, that's a harder one to explain, because what ends up happening... The same kind of thing that's happening with like Crunchyroll, where it's like, they get the license to stream it, but they don't have any interest in doing like physical releases, so that inevitably it ends up getting... Like, they sell the rights to the home release to another company. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a game of, will the home release sell enough to make it worthwhile for a company to oh, excuse me, physically release it? Because, like, they've, they've been fighting over um, uh, NGE redub. Whether there's enough um, interest for them to do it um, is a physical release. So, in you come a Kurono? It's a sheep. Yep. Okay. Whatever gets people to go to Netflix, I guess. Right. It's gonna have our own YouTube show and shit. Baby G, baby G. I swear to baby Jesus. Some people need to. Oh yeah, that that guy. Those TikToks are amazing. Oh my god. Everything retail people would love to tell you, and they can't. Love to, to have it. said. Fucking the one, the one. You know, this is cheap. Other places. Then what are you doing here? I've literally said that to people. I'm like, well, then what are you doing here? I mean, do you what? Do you need directions? They're like, yeah. well, I. I was hoping it would be cheaper. I'm like, no. Well, then go there. What, what, what do you want? <laughs> like, uh, so stupid. Uh, for yeah, this guy was like, holy crap, I'm trying to explain this to you. And I, don't know why you're not comprehending it. I'm trying not to be judgmental, but I'm sitting here going, like, I've already told you what happens. And I just thought, why is it? Because that's the membership you're at. That's why it says that on your bag tag. 
like uh, anyways Ooh. let's move my iPad so that the speaker is kind of towards my mouth and you can actually fucking hear me uh, <laughs> alright Uh, it's like, why do you only have one? It's like, are, are you, do you want a resume? Where, where's your resume? Would you like an application? <laughs> it's like, we are dead inside. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> uh. I, I I love it when you don't work somewhere and they go get the manager to yell at you and they start yelling at you and you're like, I don't work here. And they're like, huh? It's like, do I look like one of your people? That makes that makes it you a little bit sad for the people that actually work under them. Like if if the manager can't recognize that you're not one of their people, like I've I've told you guys a story about I was fucking I was in my work uniform and I went to Walmart to get groceries and this was like so just can you like can you help me? I'm like, yeah, I don't work here. And I walked away. And she went and got the general manager. And he fucking hunted me down and started yelling at me. I'm like, bro, I don't work here. And I like look at my shirt and he like looked down at the fucking front of my shirt with the fucking logo and he's just like, oh shit. <laughs> you ever like like have somebody like, you know, start sassing off and realize they fucked up and then he's just like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, uh, yeah, can I get the number for your corporate office? I'd like to let them know that you're a fucking jackwad. And he's like, I gotta go. And the woman's like, so you're not gonna help me? I'm like, I don't work here, dipshit. And she's like, oh. Why did she say that in the first place? I would think your powers of observation would be better. And realize, like, no. Oh, people are dumb as a sack of hammers. It's amazing. Like, yeah. It is. They are. It's like, ugh. And people, like, like, like last week, I know I was telling Kiki, it's like, I, you have to feel bad for the people who are trying to get a hold of the tickets department and they can't because, like, they're so, they were so slammed last week. Like, legit, even we were slammed. Like, as soon as the lines open to practically like 10 to 20 minutes after the right closed, we're busy. And so it was like, they may have less people working in the office than we do. And, but it's like, people, if you've said you've already called us, uh, we can't get a hold of the tickets. Number. If you've already called us and we gave you the tickets number, I know for pretty much a hundred percent fact that you were told we don't have any information regarding tickets. Nothing. Nada. Zip. We know about as much as you do, which is zero. So, so sorry. But what do you expect us to help you with if you've already been told, hey, um, can't help you. It's like I was covering for plumbing the other day and this guy calls and goes, I special ordered a vanity top and it came without the holes drilled. He's like, what are you going to do for me? I'm like, I'll bring it back in. We'll figure something out. He's like, that's all you got? I'm like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. And he just hung up, and I'm like, I don't know what the what the correct answer was to that, but that was my answer. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was mad at me. I'm like, well, what was I supposed to tell the guy? I said, bring it back in. We'll figure it out. Like, he goes, it took two months to get it. It's not right. I'm like, okay, sorry that happened. Like, okay. Mm, yeah. So my brain was just like partially in work mode, and I was just like, "What am I looking at this right?" Uh. Anyways, set that down so I can actually.
I don't know why I'm so stiff and tired. You people actually go out and do things. I don't. That's why you're stiff and tired. You don't get out and do things. Mm. It makes you feel better. All the joints below my waist are basically fucked right now because of all the standing I've been doing. Which is why I've just been sitting in this chair like a lump the entire day. Because I don't oh. have energy to do anything else. I mean, I went to the store, kind of, and got a couple of things. I mean, yeah, I went grocery shopping, but that's probably all I'm going to do today, other than right. school crap, which requires me to sit in front of the computer. Right. New semester started already? Yeah, started Monday. Jesus, you got to be close to being done at this point. Next year. But you have, like, a new semester, like, every month. Like, you've got to be almost all the way through. Or, when do I graduate? Hang on. Well, I'm only taking two classes every semester. Oh, okay. They were taking like a full load. I'm like, shit, you should be almost done. No. One of our buddies, I think, went to the same place you're going, but he did it for like computer technology or some shit. It was like, or IT. And it was just like, he's been in the industry since we were out of high school. So he's already got the practical skills, but he wanted the, the, the degree to match or whatever. I think he did the entire program in like three months. We're like, Jesus Christ, dude. Because they like let him just basically like test out of whatever he was comfortable with and test it out of like the first two years. It took the last two years, like literally in days. Mm. You know, like every, every like four to five days, he would pass a course and then move on to the next one. It was just like, holy crap, dude. Town in Japan spends COVID relief fund on large pink squid statue. I get dig it. They're hoping it will promote tourism. I mean, I'd go see it. Then again, there's lots of things I want to go see in Japan, so what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> lots of stuff. I was looking down at my tablet, not at my screen. <laughs> Did you face cold your door? I've been, like, I've been like that for like five ten minutes. I was waiting for you to say something. <laughs> we were so quiet for so long. I was like, I'm just going to pull up over my head like a turtle. Let's see how long till somebody says something. I was gonna do was take the hood and just pull it over the top of my head and wait and make it look like I just had an empty hoodie sitting here. Uh. Mm, good times, good times. Mm. It's gonna be 95 today. I'm sorry, it is. Uh, high of 53. I hate you. You know, everybody's real damn confident about how awesome their weather is, and how much it sucks to live here, until it's this time of year and everybody's boiling alive, and I'm over here like, it's pleasant, I'm wearing a hoodie. I have a new friend request from a name I don't know. Is it a bot? You'll, you'll, you'll be happy to know, Kiki, that we have a frost advisory tonight. <gasps> it's it's May the 5th. We have a frost advisory. Hey, I didn't know they were going to make a red sonjo. Son, red so, so. 
Okay. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Red Sonia movie. Okay. But apparently they picked their uh well, Red Sonia. Hannah Is John anybody... Kamen. So nobody we've ever heard of. No, uh I'm... she was in um Ant Man and the Wasp. Okay. She was the chick who kept phasing out. Okay. Wow, this movie has apparently been through hell to get here. I'm shocked, I tell you. Shocked. I'm not that shocked. Hmm. Poor, poor female led movies that are about strong women. Unrelated side note about things that, like, I was excited to see her in development. Uh, the manga, my sensei is. Is the uh, annoying is getting a, a anime and that's freaking hilarious. Yeah, I saw that. That is going to be awesome. I'm so that's on the same level as Kobayashi's Dragon made of cute. Is it now? I've been reading the manga for years. It's it's awesome. I mean, it's a stupid like slice of life office romance, whatever. Not even romance because the dude's oblivious, but it's a tiny. <laughs> My little office lady and her senpai who is I'm sorry, my senpai is annoying, who is a gigantic dude. He's like wall of muscle, you know, Curtis, uh Sid Curtis, you know, monster. He's completely oblivious to the fact that she's in love with him. And it's hilarious because she does all this, she's doing she keeps doing all this stuff to try to like make herself more, I don't want to say desirable, but more interesting, and he's just like, ah, oh, yes, I can see why you would want to do that. It's important to have these skills in life. And she's like, yeah, you know, so, like, we can do things. He's like, yes, but you don't have to worry, because I already can do these things, so if you ever need help, just ask. And She's like, but I want to be able to be helpful to you. He's like, ah, it's alright, that's what men are here for, to be helpful. What a dork. <laughs> he's awesome. He's fucking awesome. I love him so much. He's such a fucking doofus. And she like, like one time she was like, she was going to call one of her friends because she had made extra like stew or whatever. And he was like, she accidentally calls him and he's like, what extra stew? I'll be right over. And you just in the distance, just hear kiss the door. I brought bread for the stew. <laughs> I think it was he brought something I was just like that is hilarious oh they released uh, some photos for House of Dra uh, the Dragon oh uh, that's a Exciting, I think. The prequel to Game of Thrones. Oh. Dude, they should do the Hedge Knight. Matt Smith looks weird with blonde hair. If they if they did a mini series for the Hedge Knight, I'd be so happy. You can dream. Do you know what I'm referencing? No. The the Hedge Knight alright. You know, like, in the first couple episodes of season one, when one of the, uh, I can't think of, like, the snow, that's Snowfall, Snowden? The hell is it called? The, one of the, like, the younger sons of the main character, or whatever you call it, the guy, like, he's laying in bed, and she's talking about the greatest knights of the realm, and they talk about Sir Duncan, the greatest knight who ever lived. Dunk the Tall is the hedge knight. He's... It's his. It's the story of how he became a knight. He got taken under the wing of this other knight, 
Sir Duncan is the greatest knight who ever lived, and the hedge knight is the story of how him as a squire became a knight, or like basically how he got became a squire than a knight. And the whole joke of it is, Dunk, Dunk, who becomes Duncan, is the like is gigantic. He's humongous, and he talks another another knight into squiring him, and then and then rides for the knight when he gets injured. Well, he's he's. As big as the mountain, but good natured. He like legitimately was a one was a one man chivalry machine, and his story is absolutely amazing. It's about this poor urchin becoming the greatest knight who ever lived. Hmm. They call it the Hedge Knight because he sleeps like basically sleeps on the roadsides because he has no master. The Lord. I think he ends up becoming one of the Targaryen's knights. I can't remember which house he ends up fighting for. Oh, John Mulaney's out of rehab. Well, that's good. He's. Uh, I didn't even know he was. Yeah, he rarely was in rehab. And is already going to do a live comedy show. Well, good. And it's sold out. Good for him. Of course. As one does, as one does. Well, he's funny as all fuck. No. A comedian who's funny. This is madness. This is blasphemy. I mean, there are plenty of comedians out there I don't find funny. Well, as, one of, as long as one of them isn't Robin Williams, we can still be friends. No, I still find Robin Williams funny. Maybe some of his older work is a little less okay at times. Well, again, product of the era. Yeah, you have to remember what time it came out. And... People were like, he was kind of un-PC in 1982. Like, 1982 was almost 30 years ago. So? 30 years ago, you'd be stoned for being gay. Mm-hmm. And it's just this, like, oh. But no, Robin Williams is a treasure. He was a treasure, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love people like Sam Kinnis, and I don't give a shit about I don't know Sam Kinnis. He was the guy who screamed. Uh, the one I always remember is in Back to School with Donnie, Donnie, with Rodney Dangerfield, where they're yelling about the Vietnam War. Hmm. You would know him if you saw him. He was the guy. He was the guy that would like go into screaming tirades on stage. Maybe. Nothing uh comes to mind right now. Yeah, because I'm the asshole who likes like the really politically incorrect people, George Carlin. Um I don't actually like Dennis Leary, shockingly. I, I enjoyed Lewis Black. I loved um I love Ron White. I fucking love Ron White. Because they were pulling over everybody driving down that sidewalk that day. Um I always forget his name, but uh the um the guy from No Cure for Cancer. Um Bill Hicks. Oh my god. Just just the just the talk about about the use of mushrooms for treating PTSD is my favorite line of all time. Cause I feel like everybody should go out into a nice flower field. And take five dried grams of mushrooms, a heroic dose, and become one with the universe. It's good for you. It builds character. It treats psychotic disorders. <laughs> uh. Of course, he's been dead for 20 years, so it doesn't really matter. Hmm. He had horrible pancreatic cancer. Died like 1992, I want to say. Oh. He was a class act. Uh, Dennis Leary stole most of his material from him. Oh, 
Oi. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. oi. For some reason, Tay, I'm like, I don't know why I'm extra emotional right now. I really don't. Because I don't have my fucking period, so I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I, I don't was, have an answer. I was about to ask to be crass, was it that time of the month? But if it's not, then I don't no. know. How, how is that crass? That's a very strong possibility. Because it's impolite to ask. How is it impolite to ask? We're all friends here. <laughs> Mike, is it that time of the month again? Yes, possibly. Some yeah. men do get sort of a period-like system. Yeah, generally when dudes are cranky like that, it's kidney stones in my experience. Oh. It's like a watermelon through a garden hose. But. Oh, you're way too comfy. Thanks. Okay. I want to be as comfy as this dog behind me. He's, he looks awfully, they're awfully comfy. Oh, you okay? There we go. I got it, I got it. Okay. What? I got messages? Oh shit, I didn't even hear my phone go off. Oh, yeah, I, I don't care about that. They keep sending me news articles I don't care about. It's like, millennials are killing the blank industry. Oh shit, no, you didn't say. Sucks to be the blank industry. Millennials are killing the housing industry. Probably because they don't have any money. Houses require money. When we can barely afford rent, how can we get a house? Exactly. Well, you should have thought about that before you got that job that doesn't pay enough money. Maybe you should pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Uh, yeah, you should have thought before you got that. Stuff. Coffee, stuff oh yeah, I love when they use that. They're like, like, well, maybe if you didn't eat out as much and you stopped buying all that fucking Starbucks coffee, you'd have money for a house. I'm like, yeah, because the the missing uh, what one to two thousand dollars a month would definitely be made up by the not eating out. Mm -hmm. What's up, buddy? Oh, I got a life, my boy. What? <laughs> what? what? Sorry, buddy. Why? Is that a hard life, huh? Do you rub down? Can you do your rub down? Oh, brother, I got a life. I'm showing a glass, brother. Hey, um. Oh, Drew Seeley. Okay, sorry. All right, what, what the hell? What? Mm -hmm. uh, Middle school lunch lady hosted student sleepover with booze and porn. Oh, great. Quality human beings. This was in Louisiana. No, oh, of course. These are multiple sleepovers, apparently, where teens drank alcohol, watched porn, and had sex. Okay. I mean, she shouldn't be doing that, but teens are going to do that anyway. Yeah. Just shouldn't have been at her house. Exactly. Trying to find this. This is really odd. Okay, I'm already. Um, this is weird. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, looking for something here, it's not coming up. Or I'm trying to find my notes that will tell me what's going on with this. Hmm. Okay, system, where is this? Um. Uh, okay, um, five, five. Oh, that's why, because it's still on five, five. That's why. So many accounts today that I'm like, I haven't gone back far enough. You figure it out? Sort of. I was like, oh, that's why I can't find him yet, because I haven't gone back far enough yet. Mm. There we go. So there's only one account for him now. Are you okay there? Oh, you know. Just old and trying to put slippers on. Keep my feet warm. Mm. Awesome sauce. Oh, are you cold? Yes. <laughs> Is it cold mushroom? <laughs> ah, cold mushroom. Um. Sorry that we have our frost warning today. I. Hey, I live in a lower latitude than you, so just. <laughs> we have yeah. fire warnings. We had fire warnings last week. Because it's hot, dry, and windy. Um. You just see they're going like, okay, uh, okay. Could... Kind of like, um, what's the confusion? My second statement in those notes. <laughs> it's just a word. <laughs> uh. Oh, uh, recently Hubby and I watched The Mitchells versus The Machines. Okay. I recommend the shit out of that movie. That's funny as fuck. Okie dokie. The only problem is it's on Netflix, so you have to, you know, deal with that. Right. Other than that, it's a great uh, family comedy animated film. Right. Awesome. Uh, okay. I'm talking something. I'm like Netflix. I'm currently thinking something about that. I don't know what. Um. Finally, on book nine, I'm up. I'm kind of fucking crazy. I'm reading two books at the same time. Yeah. Um, one I'm able to do that because the second book I'm reading is something that I've read several times, at least once or twice before, so I kind of know what's happening. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. What, what book is it? It's um the Rush to series. Uh -huh. Um, it's the last book in the series. Um. And it's kind of it's it's very interesting, um, because even from because I was telling another uh, server about this, um, 
even from the first book, book eight is referenced. And like, and then there's a dude in this book who references the first eight. Like, he knows too much about the main character, and he's kind of creeping him out. Like, how the fuck do you know so much about me? What the hell's going on? Um, and also, like, there's characters who stick around from, like, earlier books. So, like, Holly sticks around from book three. So she's first introduced in book three, and so she's still there. Paige is introduced in, like, books six or seven and she's still there in book nine um you see a bunch of same characters the same book you meet page um that you met with holly in book three so it's very interconnected um and very nice but and you also the bad guy ends up he's an agent for the evil nameless organization that several times during the book you meet several different agents and it's they say like yeah i kind of work for these guys who are like kind of evil like torture and send kids off to do who have no idea what they're doing in terms of the paranormal send them off to do a spell that's going to kill them and they don't know it and we don't tell them because they're gonna we don't want to die, so we're going to send them off to do it, and they're going to be the sacrifice, and then we're going to get what we want. So, yeah. Um, and one of my favorite parts about the series is that the main character is kind of one of those where chosen one kind of things. By, by the time um this book rolls around like the main character Eric isn't much younger than Cupcake is like between 30 and 35 like he's in his 30s he's overweight not that Cupcake is we love you um oh I'm massively overweight I'm not gonna argue that point <laughs> um but you know not exactly in the best of shape has no magical powers at all. Um, and he's just, he just wants to be an English teacher, be married to his wife, you know, read Shakespeare, and just be normal. And ever since he went off on a road trip following a dream, it hasn't been normal. And he's like, well, why does this, this, this keep happening to me? Like, because a lot of times, like, even when it's like the whole like chosen one thing, even when they're younger, they have some sort of magical power or some sort of like natural ability, like, oh, you're a natural with that sword kind of thing. Right. Um, and he's not athletic. He's not, doesn't have a net. Well, he does have, because this reference that he's very special, that he shines, but it also, you know, because he's such good of heart that he can't not help people right and so like that's one of the things that like you know but especially since like the first first adventure he went on like he goes down goes on the adventure follows the dream and eventually makes it to the end point where he finds a really great wealth of knowledge in terms of right. like so basically what he finds is he finds the equivalent of moses's staff basically, um, at the end of his first teacher. And um, so he has all this knowledge inside of him. And there's the gas station attendant dude who's like this, you know, why is the, like, literally little old man, like, he's maybe, like, four feet tall, um, who says, I can make it so you don't remember it except in your dreams, and then even then you won't remember your dreams. So then that way that knowledge isn't forefront in your brain and kind of like all that weight of that knowledge there isn't like overshadowing everything else so granted he does have like that innate like knowledge that's hidden in like the part of your brain that you don't use but every time that 
it happens is like, oh, like, it's like end of the world cataclysm type. And I don't have any information. I have to figure it out by myself. Maybe with a little bit of help from my friends kind of thing. But it's, it makes him more relatable in my opinion. Like, you know, if he is the chosen one, yeah, he is chosen, but, well, is kind of reluctant. He's like, why does he keep choosing me? Ah, oh. like, I just want to sit here. Like, the one, the one book, he, like, literally, like, he just had a long day. He just wanted to go home. His wife was baking him fried chicken for dinner. And he walks in, and he's like, oh, shit. Hi guys, what cataclysm is happening now? That's kind of like how the, the one book starts where he's like, oh, my witchy friends are here and they don't look happy to be here. Okay, what's going on? Right. And he never got his fried chicken dinner because cataclysm type of event was happening. So, right. No, I want fried chicken. Right. To be fair, I often want fried chicken. Who doesn't love fried chicken? Vegans? A movie I'm looking forward to is Army of the Dead. Right. Which had to replace an entire character. Jeez. Post production. Really? Because one what? of the actors got flagged for child porn. Oof. So, no. So they hired a woman to replace him, and she's been essentially edited into the film in his place. Oh my god. Was he, like, a genius. main actor, you think? Or was he, like, a... I'm saying, is it, like, a main character that they had to, like... Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And I'm just so happy they went with a woman to replace him. Because now there's... Because his character has a love thing with another character, so now there's a lesbian story in the movie. Should have made it a robot. It would have been way better. <laughs> a robot would have been awesome, too. But I don't think it's that kind of zombie film. <laughs> no fucking data. Um, the one I'm looking forward to is Dune. It's supposed to come out last year, but like everything else is pushed back. Um, so looking forward to that. Right. Um, is that coming out now? Because it, it'll be interesting, because it's definitely a different, like, filming aesthetic between directors. Well, yeah. Um, Who's the director? Uh, Dennis Villeneuve, if that's how you say it. Um, let me see. Let me check. Let's see if I can... Who directed... New dude. If I could type, that'd be great. Dune. Uh, yeah, Dennis or D and I S, and then it's V I L L E N E U V E. Okay. Uh, I, I don't. So, I don't know them off the top of my head, but yeah. Um, let's see here. Let me see if I can find out what else he may have directed. Um, career. So he's done August 32nd on Earth, Maelstrom, Polytechnique, Incendies, Prisoner's Enemy, Sierra Arrival, Blade Runner 2049. Um, he directed all of those and wrote about five of them. So, um... Arrival is a damn good movie. Yeah. If you love uh, aliens and uh, the concept of time, that's a good movie. 
Yeah, I I did watch most of it. I got to the point where um, Costello and Abbott, they the one bomb went off, and they were like, "We're dying." Ah, uh, yeah. So I got to that point, but I for some reason stopped and never finished. Well, I recommend uh, I recommend finishing it sometime. It's 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 really good. Good. Good uh, to hear. It's 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 one of those movies that made hubby go wow, and usually he kind of checks out on dramas. Mm hmm. Because he's a tired old man. <laughs> hey, I feel his pain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All I have to say is I want to eat your pancreas. <laughs> Bitch got shanked. Uh, I remember Kiki, I remember being so confused when you suggested that because um I was like I legit thought you just said that. I didn't realize that was the middle of the movie. And I was like, why does she want to eat my pancreas? And then you're like, that's the name of the film. I was like, oh, okay. Oh dude, the titles of Japanese movies and animes are so weird. Some of them at least. All the ones that they, they went with the really long titles, like I don't know, like you know, I'm stuck in another world with my smartphone and all that stuff. It's like, what the hell? I mean, some of them are just like straight out telling you the plot. Some of them are just a name or something like that, and then some are just what random, right? Well, not random. They still have something to do with the anime, but it's so you won't get it until you watch it, right? Yeah. Like, I want to eat your pancreas it is integral to the film. It's something right. to say. Spoilers. Right. To each other later right. on. Um, but where was I going? I don't know. Um, but a lot of anime lately has essentially just been a, a, a sentence that is the fucking plot. Right. Like the the one they're doing right now about like I I'm from the the booty town right before the last dungeon, and I'm very, the weakest, so I moved away. And it's about the guy; he's the weakest person in his town, but mm -hmm. because he lives right next to like the last dungeon, like he's like stupid powerful. Yeah, he's powerful elsewhere. Right. By comparison, living in the regular world, he's. Mm -hmm. Like crazy strong, but he's the weakest in his village. Which yeah. really begs the question why more adventurers aren't from where the you know Dark Lord's castle is. They're too busy working for the Dark Lord, maybe. Very possibly explains where his you know captains and lieutenants and stuff come from. Yeah. Oh. oh, my back. Indeed. St uh. Stupid giant boobs. Yes, damn you, giant milky. D anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For some reason, I got reminded of um, someone who was like, I. It's like. It's like, this is just part of, like, being subscribed to, like, Satan's Waterfall. I was like, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> Satan's Waterfall. You could say that. You wouldn't be 100% wrong. Oh, I don't You know what, like, blew my mind was one of these... Complete side note. One of these cosplay... Cosplayer girls, whatever you want to call it, models, like... Like, actually understanding where Bulma's bunny suit came from. Nice. Well, seriously, Mitch, the, the show came out in, like, 1985 or 86. Okay. Most of these people completely missed OG Dragon Ball. And it's not, like, commonly yeah. brought up in, like, the community anymore. So, like, somebody understanding a, a reference from the... Like, it, it's not just, like, 
the ooh, they did a you know a poster. Like it's an actual plot point in the first season. Like it, it's an actual like it's they didn't just do it for fan service. Like it actually has a plot point. Like like the next couple episodes after she she puts it on, like there's a whole thing about this town they go to, and like this. Like, I just remember being really shocked that this lady, like, actually knew what was referencing it. Like, she, like, made note of it, like, in her comment, like, I was like, holy crap, I'm more impressed that somebody, you know, below, like, the age of 30 had any clue what the hell, you know, why Balma has a bunny suit. Yeah. I mean, I'd be impressed no matter what, like, yeah. Anybody, you know, born after the year, like, 1995, being like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's like, holy crap, you've actually seen that? What? Yeah. One of the things is, uh, I was, because I remember seeing a cosplay once of a book that's kind of mainstream, but not necessarily mainstream mainstream, I guess. You could say, um, it's it's not that far off the beaten path kind of thing. Yeah, like if you're into that kind of series, like the only reason I found this series was because one of the quartets of hers was on. It was like book three. Right. I didn't realize it until I got the rest of the series, but it was on sale in like the cheapo book bin at drug mart right mart, mart. i was like oh this looks cool i bought it and i read it and then i was like i need more of this <laughs> right <Immediately. laughs> but um yeah but it's a a storm wing which is one of the more one of the easier ones to cosplay in terms of is it's what's called an immortal. So it's um so it has a human face, human torso. Can't remember how, what the legs look like, but um I think the legs are normal, but I can't remember if the legs are like part human leg, part um, like, uh, bird leg, but I know for sure that the feet are bird's feet, like birds of prey feet. They, instead of arms, they have steel wings and a steel tail. So, someone one day, you know, a human one day, and this is how they were created, they were going across the land and saw the war and kind of like imagine them into existence like i i wish there was something that would stop people from going to war and so what stormings do is they feed off of fear and pain which is what you have a lot of in war and then what happens is after so they're circling above and so they can cut you with their their feathers um and well yeah they're made of metal right yeah steel or metal something like that um and so after the battle to try to make you think twice about going to war the storm wings will come down they will pee and poop on your bodies and roll in it so you never want to be downwind from a storm wing because they literally smell like shit and dead bodies but of course, that doesn't really stop people from going to war. And also because for like several hundred years, they were imprisoned in the like celestial realm type thing. Um, magical realm. But so, so I saw someone doing that. So like that's one of the easier critters from that realm to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, you, then there are the spiderins, which are big, huge spiders. That like they're like five feet tall ish, and they have a human head, and they have sharp pointy teeth, and their favorite food is people. 
Um, then there are there are flying horses. Then there are the not so nice flying horses. Um, called Hurrix, which is a like slurred, like horse hawk Hurrick. So it kind of mushed together. Yeah, um, don't they have so. uh, claws instead of hooves? Yes, they have claws instead of hooves. They have bat wings and sharp white teeth and forward facing eyes. So they're not nice. There's flying monkeys. There's um, tiny flying horses. So like the pixie flying horse. Um, centaurs. Trolls. No, not trolls. Ogres. Sorry. Ogres. Giants. Dragons. Um, there's also a minotaur-like creature that you meet when Dane goes to visit her father and mother. Um, her mother was human and visited by like a local hunt god, and so she kind of became a local goddess of healing for where Dane grew up. And so she went to the god realm to visit them at one point, and she meets one of these things, and they're like, oh, it's basically what happens is they, if you see one and you're a woman, you're kind of screwed because all it wants to do is mate with you. And she finds out from the platypus god that there's no females of the species. And she's like, well, no wonder he's the way he is. There's no, like, he was made like that. Like, you know, like her sense of injustice, like, hey, like, you know, why'd you wake him like that? Like, what the fuck? Um, what the hell is going on with you people? Like, to make him different. Um, so... And also, if you stab yourself with a Stormwing feather, you become a Stormwing, and you can't change back. So, you find that out in the series about Dane. There's mm -hmm. the uh, Emperor Mage book, where the Emperor Mage um, of a an area that is similar to Egypt-ish. Um... He wasn't doing very nice things, and his way out was to stick himself with a feather, and the Stormwings he was allied with, allied with, or kept imprisoned, kind of told him, did kind of didn't tell him all the information about what would happen when he did that. <laughs> so, um, I know there's one Stormwing that Dane keeps encountering and actually changes her minds about her mind about them like because she starts out when you first meet her she's like 14 15 years old and very black and white and she eventually realizes like not everything is black and white like red cash is generally a very nice star wing depending on how you feel but she actually eventually names one of her kids after him um but yeah there's uh so the Emperor Mage dude, he actually was one of the people who um, unleashed the spells that put the immortals into the world. So he kind of caused some of the trouble that was going on. So yeah, lots of fun. But that's one of those things that um, it's a world where it's similar to medieval Europe. Swords, horseback riding, jousting, that kind of thing. But it includes magic. And different kinds of magic. It also kind of a little bit deals with racism. Because the nomads of the desert are looked down upon upon what you would think as the generally white people of the main country that's dealt with throughout the entire book series. And <clears throat> like there, there are people who know like, yeah, we're not better than them. They're, they're the same as us. Or they're better than we are because they're not, don't have broom sticks shoved up their asses about how better than, than everyone we are. So, um, it's like, it's not necessarily that they're worse than we are, they're just different than us. Hello. Um. And so magic also takes on, like, a specific color. So, for example, Sir Alana of Tree Bond and Alu, uh, hers is purple. 
uh, and so was her twin brothers. And Jonathan, King Jonathan's is blue, I think. So, like, it's, like, different, like, as they do their spell casting, it kind of shows up as... So, if you know the color of someone's magic, then you know, kind of, like, uh, for example, she knows that her enemy and kind of bad villain of Alanis Quartet is orange. So she knows, like, if she sees something that's orange, it was Sir Roger. So, no fun. Um, and so there is four, eight, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. These seventeen books off the top of my head. Three quartets, a trilogy, the standalone spy spy guide, and the first book about um, Noir, uh, who like his childhood and the child his childhood with the future emperor mage, because he grew up in that area. Um, so. This is off the top of my head. She also has other books about stuff. So, other other books I'm probably missing. So, mm. yeah. excuse me. Mm. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. Well, book-wise, so far I'm enjoying uh, the book I talked about last month, even though I haven't read it much, uh, Gideon in the Ninth. Mm -hmm. The uh, necromancer lesbian space pirate drama thing. It's good! Uh, it's by Tamsin Nero? I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm also reading uh, Stiff, The Curious Life of Human Cadavers, because why not? And Gender Trouble, Feminism, and the Subversion of Identity. So I'm trying to read three books at the oh. same time, and it's not, it's not going great, because I'm not really reading that often. <laughs> oh. Oh no. I mean, uh, the whole reason I got this stupid tablet was to read off of it, and I'm not doing that that often. I should probably do it more often. At least I use it for Boy. textbooks. True. News. Uh. What are you eating? Nothing. It's too wide, I can't tell. Great value gummy snacks. Ah. I didn't think we were going to go this long. I was like, I'm going to order food. I'll get it between the recording the podcast and my tabletop game. Well, we can stop. We're at two hours and 30 minutes. Well, I mean, it's up to you guys, but, you know. And we actually talked for a lot of it. Yay, mm -hmm. talking! I have a uh, sandwich waiting for me anyway. What? Yay! Uh, oh, pardon. My mom's not going to be no home worries. tonight, so I was, she's like, she's like, figure out your own dinner. I'm like, hmm. Are you going to get pizza or Chinese? I don't know. I was looking at the Chinese like ten minutes ago, but like they're using a they're not using DoorDash anymore. They're using like proprietary system. So I was like, oh, I don't okay. know if I want to go through the work of setting up another account. Mm. I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to take a fucking cut of. I wouldn't want DoorDash to be taking cuts when it sounds like mo I'm betting most of their people were uh, most people were doing pickup. Yeah. 
Yeah, because now they have two different options, order pickup or order delivery. Mm. I never I never order delivery because they want like it's like ten dollars after everything is said and done for DoorDash. Which I'm way too cheap for. Well, let's wait for Mish to come back, and then we'll say our goodbyes. Yeah, probably wise. And then everybody can go, you know, eat, or continue to work, or whatever. Right. <laughs> I should probably feed the dog, too. I know, he looks so pathetic. At least I think I can see him. Yeah, he's kind of off to the left of my head, where my yeah. fingers are. His head's right about where I'm circling. He's got his head up against the pillows. Yeah. He's probably hungry. I've been uh, oh. occasionally hearing the cats on the other side of the door losing their absolute minds because the door's shut. Right. How dare I? I mean, honestly, I might just go out for something to eat after, like, after the game's over. Because we usually play till 8 or 9 o'clock. I'll just, like, run to McDonald's or Taco Bell or something. I don't know. I probably should eat something healthy since my guts are all locked up. But I think, I think it's the popcorn. Mmm. I seem to remember this the last time my guts did this, that it's something like the popcorn, like, bulks up something in my guts, and it makes it, like, it makes it so that it's hard for me to have to go to the bathroom. Not like, not like you think, like, not the actual act of going to the bathroom, but, like, everything gets slowed down in my, in my guts. I don't know if it's just like it's like rice and it just sucks up all the moisture. Maybe? It's weird. I'm like, like all of a sudden I'm having problems again. I think it's stressful going, no. I've had popcorn like the last three, four nights I've come home because I'm too tired to have anything else. And like I can throw a bag of popcorn in the microwave for two minutes and have something to eat that's large volume, but not a lot of calories. And so. I'm going to stop doing that and see if that helps this clear itself up. Because I, dude, I felt like my guts were going to pop yesterday. Ew. I was in so much pain. That sounds terrible. It, you just feel like, you know, it's like you, if you laugh or you cough and you're like, you're like my stomach felt like, you know, really like swollen, I guess is the way to say. Like like an overinflated balloon, basically. And I've I've had to use the bathroom three times today since I took the stuff to try to, you know, move it all along. I mean it wasn't like terrible. It was like it was the gentle stuff, but it was like I was like, oh man, I've been going to the bathroom a lot today. It's like, yeah, that's because you freaking took you took freaking Miralax. I came home and had Miralax mixed with fucking Gatorade. Blech. I never really want Chinese. I don't know what I want. Hmm. Poor cupcake. It's alright. I got tomorrow and Friday that I'm off for the weekend. Oh, I should probably open my box. Oh! Yeah, that's that box you saw me bring down. That was, uh, I know what it is. It's Dragon Slayer. Or not Dragon Slayer. Demon Slayer. Dude, that hitting number one at the box office is so sweet. That was awesome. The movie, which I think it has three now? Three movies? Maybe. It might only be two. I think it was one, isn't it? It's the first movie. This Mugen Train is the one that's at the theaters. Yeah. These things must be huge, because this box... This box is gigantic. I did not think it was going to be this big. I thought these things were going to be small. But maybe I missed something. I don't know. They're yeah. They're not that that big. That looks so pretty. Okay. It has such These a great are... animation style. Right. The patterning yeah, is what it really like interests me. Like they all have like such interesting. That's actually part one, but like the. The thing he wears over his 
his shirt, the green oh, just... black pattern. Let's see if I can get it. Like they all have such interesting designs. Outfits. Right. Yeah. They're not bland looking characters, especially some male heavy animes have that issue where the women look kind of same ish. Right. Because even like, even um, like even Dragon Ball Z doesn't suffer from that, and that's pretty male heavy. Like, not even the freaking Namekians look that close together. They all have individual designs, which probably says more about Akira Toriyama than anything else. That he's able to take a species that are all you know green slug people and make them look different from each other. Hmm. Uh huh. Mmm, slug people. Hi, Mish. Hi. Okay. Was that your entire box? Yeah, that was. that's all I ordered, was just those two things. Okay. Then let's say our goodbyes. Hang on, let me bring up the thing. Okay. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I don't know. <laughs> I had a frog in my throat, all right? God, leave me alone. All right. Bye, gang. Just a super cupcake. See ya. Tails. Thank you once again for checking out the Super Happy Fun Jabatron Tea Party Podcast with Kiki, Cupcake, and this week hope you enjoyed the show, and stay safe, my fellow internet beings. Fucking get vaccinated, you idiots.